I decided to get into kind of the realm of leadership development and creating healthy workplace culture, because unfortunately, I have worked in many unhealthy workplaces where leaders really didn't know how to lead dysfunctional teams and myself included in the very early stages of my career. And I think many organizations don't recognize that they are setting their leaders up for failure by just assuming that everyone's going to figure out the leadership piece. Like it's, it, and, and I believe that we've made leadership far more complicated than it needs to be. I believe it's an exchange of energy between two people. That said, I think that if you don't understand the underpinnings of how we are more connected through behavior and how to build trust and connection, then leadership can be really difficult. And, and I think once you understand those pieces. So my hope is to be able to help people really understand, like I said, how to build those, those human connections through trust and, and really following your core values so that you feel very authentic. It's not like you're following someone's book that says, if you do A, B, and C, you will become a tremendous leader. I think we have everything we already need. It's really making sure that we feel authentic. It's that it's us that we are showing up in the best way for other people and holding really good space, but we're doing it in a way that helps us understand how we're hardwired to connect naturally. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. So mm -hmm. when you were sharing that, it, it actually reminded me of a conversation I had just a few days ago with a healthcare leader who came to me kind of looking for career advice. And, uh, you know, I think he shared that he was in a pretty difficult situation where he felt like he could not be successful. And there are a lot of things that he's really passionate about that he brought into this leadership position that he thought he'd be able to make pretty significant systemic changes. And he feels like he has just hit wall after wall and then been more and more micromanaged and more and more unsuccessful. And I think yeah. his perspective was that he's just getting kind of squished in between his executive leaders and his people he manages and everyone, everyone is unhappy with mm -hmm. his job and he is unhappy. And so it was just, it was such a painful conversation because yeah. I think at this point he's really just looking for a way out and a way to find like, how can I reconnect with what matters to me? So I'm curious, like, what are your thoughts about that? I, my heart goes out to those leaders who are in these positions mm -hmm. where they're essentially feeling like they're set up to fail. Yeah. And, and I think that in many cases they are, but not intentionally, you know, I know one of my employers, I, I found myself in a very similar situation where I was told that the home I was running was fine. And I got in there and three months in, I was accused of covering up the death of a resident and it wasn't, it was clearly not fine. And the culture was not fine. And it was very much a, I'm in this for myself because I had learned that I was the sixth general manager of six in six or seven years. And I think that what I shared in the last episode was that what I had to do was sit down and talk to every single staff member over the course of several months to really ask them the questions like, what experience do you want when you come to work? What's going well for you? What's not going well for you? So that I could start to build those connections with people and so that they could understand that, you know, I was in this as well. And I think that the idea was that because they had had such a turnover of managers, they all sort of felt like, what's the point? She's going to be gone in a couple of months. And this is just a learned behavior that we've had that, you know, we're sort of ruling the roost and we can do whatever we want and it doesn't matter. And that was a really difficult thing for me to sort of pivot that. But I do think that in other situations, managers get caught in that kind of messy middle piece where they want to do better. And unfortunately, a lot of organizations are driven by bottom line. And, you know, I always, I always say that is that, you know, you, I don't believe that you have to compromise your bottom line to have a healthy workplace. And I believe that for many years, we've been taught that. I certainly know I was, that it was either or, and I believe it is an and. You can have both. It's really depending on two things. I think how much the employer themselves is willing to acknowledge the worthiness of, of their employees to, to have a healthy workplace and what are some things that you can do. 
But I also think that there's a lot of things that we can change that don't cost money and will actually improve the bottom line. And one of those things I think I spoke about when we last spent some time together was the notion that if we put our people first and not our clients, then it's a it's really a win-win because what happens is, is the clients get extraordinary service, care, whatever sector you're in, because your people feel so valued that you've you know put in the time and the effort where they need to have a workplace where they feel really secure and safe and that they have meaning and worthiness. They'll go all in and they become very committed employees. So I think that we can move the needle in ways that, that don't compromise the bottom line and actually will improve it. But that can be really difficult for someone who finds themselves in a position where they just feel like they're pushing the rock up the hill every day or they're, you know, not as experienced and they just don't know where to start.